Welcome back, everyone. I'm excited for our next session featuring Nick De La Mer. As managing director and lead of Fjord, a part of Accenture Interactive in North America, Nick is responsible for leading the region in the pursuit of paradigm-shifting, impact-driven digital and physical design that breaks new ground for clients and contributes to positive systemic change around the world. Take it away, Nick. Thanks so much. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for, 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 for taking the time. Hopefully, this is a, a, a fun and a sort of informative session. We're going to talk about the future of work, uh, and we'll do that from the lens of uh, something you see here, this quote. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Saarinens. Eli, Elil and Eero Saarinen were uh, pivotal architects about 100 years ago. They designed the, uh, the St. Louis Arch, the TWA building. And more importantly, perhaps, they were the first people to really talk about context and sort of the, the when you're designing a specific thing, it really helps to take a look at sort of the broader set of experiences around it and why it is the way it is. So we'll take that bit of a lens when we talk about technology today um, and sort of what's impacting uh, sort of our lives around the work that we are doing. So first off, oops, sorry, first off, um, the workplace was under stress prior to COVID ever happening. So um, in the middle of the 2010s was sort of when this started. Uh, people's lives started to diverge from their sort of work experiences and companies started to react. They started to create uh, new headquarters, uh, multiple locations. We were engaged in a lot of that work as, and probably many of you have been a part of that, uh, th those efforts as well, because the workplace wasn't sort of uh, uh, creating an environment where people felt that they could work productively. Now, productivity is a really interesting thing. We measure productivity in a way that we've measured it for hundred plus years. This is the, the, the Ford factory on the left-hand side. Uh, we tend to measure productivity through what we consider industrial indicators, which is really butts in seats. Like how much work can I do in front of my bosses so that they know, you know that I'm doing that work um, and that I'm being productive for them. That breeds a situation where, and you see this on the bottom uh, in 2016, a, lot, a little while ago, um, trust becomes, has become sort of a large issue inside organizations. And so um, CEOs feel that sort of they aren't necessarily trusted, they don't trust their employees, employees don't feel trusted by their, their organizations around productivity and it creates sort of this uh, a, a negative cycle. In the middle of this was the workplace. And though the workplace, sort of if you go back a hundred years, it's sort of, it's a place that you wouldn't show your clients. It's a place where you get the job done. Now it's changed as we can all attest, right? And so it's become a place that's sort of a catch-all or a hold-all for all of the types of work that we do. So it's aspirational in the case of Airbnb, it shows, that they're, shows their investors that they're making a lot of money, for example, um, it's symbolic in the case of Facebook, it's the ideal programming space. It's material, it's where you get your work done. Um, it's manifesting any number of different things. And as a result, it isn't really doing anything particularly well, especially when you layer digital tools on top of it that sort of break that connectivity of just that physical location and now connect physical locations together. And as a result, we're sort of living in this, uh, this, this between world space where we're, you know, we're, we're not doing the best that we can. So then the pandemic happens and that throws things uh, into stark relief. One of the things that was really interesting about the pandemic and sort of the, all of the things around it, surrounding it was that uh, we started to look at our organizations or the organizations around us with a new critical light. And that created, an, it was an accelerant to change in a new way. If you look at, there's something, a really interesting document if you check it out, it's called the, the Edelman Trust Barometer. The 2021 edition called this out pretty starkly, which was that businesses were the only thing that was left that were both trustworthy and uh, both competent and ethical. Now, what that means is that people were putting all of the sort of the, 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 the things that they, all of their passions, their sense of purpose into an organization. And they're saying that you're responsible for all of this. And, you know, and, and obviously the workplace that doesn't exist anymore, it's all about digital tools. How can you sort of embody all of those things? And how can you sort of, how, how can you live through my values work? So in all of that, it's clear to, you know, the, the, the workplace itself, workplace design, when we think about it at a, at a, at a broad sense, hasn't been able to catch up or sort of live alongside the workforce expectations that are sort of that, that are embodying on it. And furthermore, what's typically happening is we're sort of having these conversations about sort of how did we exist and how can we optimize how we did exist versus sort of reimagining what's possible. And ultimately, employees are paying for it. Uh, sort of when we think about sort of costs associated with working from home and things, like very literally, employees are paying for it. Uh, in terms of happiness, uh, you know, productivity is up, but happiness is typically down. Uh, they're also paying for it sort of emotionally. And so what can we do about that? 
Well, there's an interesting thing that you hear about a lot, sort of as a designer, it's one of the things that we tend to tackle, and I'm sure many of you have heard of this as well, which is what we say we want isn't necessarily what we really want or need. A great example of that is the, the Subaru Ascent. In 2019, they held the dubious honor to being the car with the most cup holders. There are 19 cup holders in the 2019 Subaru Ascent. That serves a very real value, which is that people tend to buy automobiles based on their aspiration. Their aspiration is to take long road trips, their aspiration is to sort of have a good time with their family. You don't necessarily use all those cup holders, but um, at the same time, like that's what they're sold as. Uh, what you actually need and want is sort of embedded in the front of this car, which is the sort of the engine, and it gets you from point A to point B, but, but we tend to think aspirationally in that way. When we, when we think about it in the context of work, uh, we tend to imagine sort of our futures through like our past experiences and the moments that we value the most. And we can do that through the lens of sort of almost two competing systems. There's the act in activity-based design. There's the hives. This is what we think of when we think of open plan offices. It's kind of where we like to spend our time. It's the water cooler conversations. It's the, the hyper-social side of things. And then there's the cocooning side, which is what we could argue we've all been in for the last sort of year, year and a half, which is heads down task management. When you map out the amount of time that you spend in each, it's kind of, uh, you know, like maybe like two thirds cocooning, one third high collaboration time in creative organizations like mine. Um, we're maybe a little bit more, more on the high side of things, uh, but we tend to design for the hive. And so the office spaces, these open plan offices have tended to be sort of on that, that accelerated collaboration side of things. And so a lot of the conversations that we've been having over the last year have been sort of about that high versus cocoon sort of uh, mode of, of working in the hybrid space. Apple, again, sort of, has reservations, they have a brand new building, they need to support their brand new building. Google and Facebook in particular have sort of gone back and forth in terms of where they uh, sort of, are we bringing people back for sort of more of a, 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 this, this, this group collaboration or are we gonna leave them at home to do hive work? Companies like JP Morgan that are more about almost industrial way of measuring people, they've been more about sort of less productivity at home and we want people back in the office so we can measure them because they're at a by hour kind of a business. Um, and so you're starting to see this really interesting sort of conversation that's happening around those two metrics, but they may not be the right metrics to look at. And as we think about sort of uh, as we move forwards and transforming the workplace, these are maybe more appropriate ones. So the notion of workplace design we found, it's not dead, but it's really now more about mindsets and how you can support those mindsets using technology. And really ultimately how we think about doing our jobs differently and how we can support the doing of those jobs. Now, there's a really interesting survey that I would encourage everyone to look up. Initialized Capital Portfolio did a survey of their 90 plus companies, and they looked at what would they do once people came back to work. Um, in the team models, not a massive surprise, you know, going from a sort of a primary office where we were traditionally a headquarters, and that's about it, to sort of more of a hub and spoke model where you have multiple locations and people sort of operating across those. But more interestingly, fully decentralized, entirely technologically driven, people be wherever they want to be. Two to three days comes up again and again as sort of how long people want or expect to be in the office. Again, it goes back to two to three days of collaboration, the remainder of the time probably more heads down. But more interestingly enough, it, I think is the bottom graphic on the right hand side. Hubs aren't going away, sort of what we would consider as, uh, as urban locations that where people want to be around other people who sort of share their sen sentiment. But more interestingly, this notion of starting at the distributed or remote level and then using your physical location as a strategic asset rather than sort of a hold all for the types of work that you do. And I think that that's where we start to see a change, a manifest change in the way that we work. Now that manifest change is going to play across three areas. Um, one of the things uh, that we've, we've heard a lot about in the last year, Satya Nadella, the, 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 the head of Microsoft talked about it social capital and that we're, we're losing social capital that was gained during in-person time in the at-home time. We'll talk a little bit about again in a minute around sort of, sort of a new kind of empathy, but really we have to think differently, we found in terms of what we consider value exchange between the employees and the organizations they're working for and how, how different functions of the business sort of play out. So most importantly, perhaps for this group on the IT and productivity tools evolution side of things, Really, this as a human need, I need to be able to work anywhere, at any time, productively, independently, to be provided the tools that help me become proficient in my jobs, uh, to move through my jobs uh, and, and grow as human beings, uh, as employees, and become sort of uh, better in the flow of the work that I'm doing. Operational innovation and organizational transformation kind of hang off of those, I would say. Um, operational innovation is really 
like, how do I feel purpose and momentum and tie that to the organization that I work for? And so organizations being more, po- more, more um, proactive about talking about purpose, talk more proactive about talking about where they're going. Um, the organization, the operational innovation side for an organization, however, is really about how do I reduce costs? Like, how do I, how do I, how do I tie down those things and sort of minimize that sort of the, the overhead? On the organizational side, it's really about my desire, my need as a human being to feel belonging, to feel recognized for contributing to an organization. The organizational side of this for, an organi- for a company is really, I need to be able to drive retention. I don't want to be losing uh, my people. It's harder to hire. Uh, it's harder to sort of uh, to bring new people in and sort of upskill them in, in different ways. Ultimately, it all bubbles up to productivity and new metrics for productivity or new ways of being able to track how people work. So there are three main things that we'll talk about just for a, a, a couple of minutes um, in terms of how to think about how to, how to think about doing this. That we found to be to be to be to be important. The focus, the first of these, is really you know our traditional measurement metric has been sort of again butts and seats or time spent doing a task and sort of the steps along the way to do that task. We're starting to see from lead organizations a move towards sort of outcomes and impact. And what I mean by that is not dissimilar to what you'll see from sort of if you go to an Amazon Go store or if you use Zwift, um, they're measuring the beginning and the end and they're allowing you to plot your own path along the way. And what they're doing is they're using that, that plotted path as essentially a research tool that they can then use to elevate the levels of service along the way as well. Um, this is not dissimilar on the bottom left-hand side. It's a little hard to see. Um, there's a map. This is a map of a university. Uh, it's called the desire path or a system of desire paths. Basically what happens is you turf over everything. Um, you look at where people walk and then you lay tracks or you lay concrete down where the pathways have emerged. So sort of what we're starting to see sort of ha- uh, happen in more of the technology space, these complete systems that you can build on. Um, think about autonomy promoting innovation. People allow people to do their own thing, like makes things move faster. Um, and thinking of independent learning journeys or or things that are constantly moving through or constantly evolving becomes very important in this. Again, I mentioned this before on the bottom right-hand side sort of really um, kind of calls this out. Uh, the growth, a growth market is, uh, is actually sort of the work from home side of things. So being able to not just focus on sort of the workplace, but think about the multiple workplaces and how you help that, help along that, that journey to create sort of like more impact becomes important. I think it's actually in this article they talk about, I think it's actually something like 1% of all GDP or total GDP was spent on sort of at home um, working tools. It's a, a, a huge growth market. Um, and it's entirely around this idea of sort of, you know, measuring impact and allowing people to do the type of work that they need to do. Um, the second of these things is, 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 is measurement. This is a, uh, in my world, this is a, a, a big issue with a lot of the work that we do. We are what we measure. Um, and it's incredibly important, increasingly important to make visible the things that we've taken for granted. Um, on the right hand side, there's a great illustration of this in the, in the notion of commutes. Um, people are not commuting anymore when they're working from home, but they're spending their time doing it in different ways. And so typically, if you're an independent uh, employee, if you don't have management, um, you may take care of personal activities. Again, that could be uh, taking care of kids. It could be much needed time in that. Uh, managers are working longer hours. And so really starting to build metrics and build understanding of those becomes very important. Rituals are things that tie all those things together. So really doubling down on sort of what rituals are and how those come together becomes also incredibly important in this world. The last of the points that I wanna bring up because I think it isn't necessarily brought up enough is that the systems that we create have to work for all. Right now they're not, um, and that's understandable. That they're sort of the first ones out of the gate, but we do have the opportunity to change fundamentally the way that we work. Um, I mentioned sort of the, 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 this notion of a different kind of empathy before. Um, it's incredibly important that we sort of, we understand our to- the totality of our, our, our workforce. We've seen obviously a massive fall off of working mothers in the workforce. Uh, we're now looking at, diverse, at a diversity crisis in sort of the next 10 years uh, where certain populations are able to come into work. We know that people who are in work get rewarded faster typically than people who work from home. And so really starting to think about or sort of resolve our thinking about sort of how we create equality in the workforce for people so they can all be successful in their own ways rather than sort of uh, rewarding some and, uh, and inadvertently, unintentionally uh, 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 hitting other folks and, and sort of removing them from the workforce entirely. Uh, without that, uh, I, I think, you know, we, we look at sort of almost making our current situation worse um, as, as we go back to a sort of a hybrid in-person plus at home workforce and certainly distributed workforces and so on uh, make life more, more, more difficult for that as well. 
So last thing I will leave you with in this sort of lightning fast talk, um, there's a, a, an individual that is always worth sort of reading more about. His name is Howard DeBono. Uh, if you're familiar with lateral thinking or sort of the way that we think creatively, he was one of the, the, the sort of the founders of this school of thought or sort of brought it to light for, for, for more folks. And he has this really interesting quote that, that sort of we end up going back to a lot in the type of work that we do, which is to say that uh, our value concepts tend to lag behind sort of our technological abilities. We tend to build faster and be able to generate new technological ideas faster than we can sort of, we can create sort of the values behind those, or better understand the values behind those. Technical advance is a fantastic source of innovation. I mean, it's gonna, obviously it's sort of like pushing us forward, but it's not necessarily value innovation. And there's absolutely a need to stay, take a step back and sort of think about the values that, 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 that you're working towards and how all of those things come together and then think about the, tech, the ways that the technology can deliver that. And if there's one thing that we're seeing from the last year, year and a half, uh, in terms of the amazing amounts of technology that have been brought out, the amazing new ways of working, um, and, and sort of, in a sense, the, the sort of the, 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 the paradox that we're all in, where we feel sort of this desire to be back in a place, but we also uh, feel back in a place with other people, but we also feel uh, that we are more productive and we're doing great things uh, with other folks. This is the time to sort of take a step back and not necessarily say, hey, we're just going to drop things into the world, but to really think about sort of the impact that those people might have. And sort of as we do that, to live through those experiences with other people and, uh, uh, and bring them to life with them. Constantly do research, recognize this is a living system, and recognize that it's going to take a long time for us to get back to sort of any sense of normal if we return to it at all. So that was my lightning talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm happy to sort of always answer questions about it uh, later on, but I really appreciate it. And with that, back to the folks at Pendo. Thank you, Nick. That was amazing. Uh, just thinking about whether we're just innovating technologically or whether we're actually creating value, creating value for our customers, creating value for our employees, creating value through the technology that we're putting in both to our workplaces as we redesign them, but also in our customer ex experiences as we redesign those. Those were really thought provoking questions. And I hope all of us will reflect on how our organizations are using technology, not for just technology's sake, but to add value and create value.